Hi you guys, it's April with Hair 101 and I am doing another Q&A video. You guys are awesome. You gave me so many questions on Facebook and Instagram that it's turning into a couple Q&As because I know that nobody's gonna listen to me talk for like three hours, but I wanna get to all of your questions. So, well, I probably still won't even get all of them. You guys are so amazing. Swim hair, best care tips. All right, so if you're going swimming, especially if you have blonde hair, even the little girls with natural blonde hair, you definitely need to plan ahead for your swimming. Now, the worst places that I've found have been like hotel swimming pools. It seems like whatever they use in the water, it just makes your hair turn green. So my advice to you would be to make sure you get your hair wet before you enter the water with clean, not chlorinated water. So in the shower, the bathroom, whatever you have to do, go ahead, get your hair wet because hair is like a sponge. So you're gonna wanna get it wet. And then on top of that, I also put a leave-in conditioner on top of my hair before I jump into the water. And I also would say that braiding it or putting it into like a tight bun or something to keep it up to where you're not maybe getting it in the water as much, but braiding it is a good idea because it kind of keeps it compact. But anyway, the, those two tips would help you a lot. And if you're in the water a ton, you could still have the chance of it turning that green color. At that point, there's several awesome products that you can get. I know Paul Mitchell has a chlorine get rid of hair, hair care shampoo or something. I'm not even sure exactly what it's called, but I've used it and it works great. But you can also just use baking soda or lemon juice. And um, I actually have a video on this. I'll put a link below. It's chlorine tips, how to get the green out of your hair. So, but if you guys take care of your hair ahead of time and keep adding, like rinsing it out, putting in the conditioner, making sure that it's nice and saturated before you get in the water, it won't soak up as much as that chlorine and you'll be in a lot better shape than you would have been. All right, Brittany. So she says tips for working in a salon for your first time. She just passed the state boards and she's had a few owners from salons reach out to her, but how do I choose? She's uh, afraid to start somewhere really nice because she doesn't have much experience help. Okay, so first of all, I feel like that is a common mistake that people make. They just don't think they're good enough to go somewhere nice, which is not true. You can go somewhere nice. You, you can go there and you can learn. I mean, think about it. If you're going somewhere nice, the stylists around you usually have a little bit more experience and they're going to help you out. Um, I'm not sure what kind of salons are reaching out to you. I'm guessing that they're booth rent salons. If they're reaching out to you, I'm not sure, but I know that the owners really like, they really need to rent those spaces to make their salon work. So sometimes it seems like they reach out to people a little bit sooner. So if you, you have to kind of decide where you want to end up. Do you want to be in a commission salon? Do you want to be in a really nice commission salon? Go for it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it, especially if they're willing to hire you, then they see something in you that they want at their salon. Um, but my best advice to you would be to go into all of them, all of your options, spend a day there. Tell them, be like, you know what? I'm not making any commitments today, but I'd love to spend the day here and um, like fold towels, sweep the floor, kind of just see how things work and get to know you guys and see if I'd like to work here. That is a great idea because if you, get to know the owner and some of the, the, the people that are there and get a feel for the salon, you'll kind of feel if that's where you wanna belong, if that's somewhere that you'll feel comfortable and the people that you'll get along with. Because as much as I'd like to say it doesn't really matter where you go, as long as you take good care of your clients, no, it really does. Especially when you're working long hours with the same people, you wanna be able to feel comfortable with them, feel like they, they're kind to you, um, feel that they are trustworthy because you'll have your color and supplies out. Um, so yeah, you'll kind of want to get a feel if there's already a lot of negativity and like bashing and gossiping going on, they might turn you off and be like, okay, I didn't love that salon. Let me go try another one. So that would be my best advice is to just kind of go in, talk to them, find out what all the rules are. Are you going to be cleaning at night? Are you going to be like, what kind of stuff's going to bother you? I know a few people that have gone into spas or salons and like thought they loved it and liked the people pretty good. But then like there were just a few things that just irked them. Like they had this big long list of chores they had to do before the end of the night. And they were like, I'm exhausted. I want to clean up all this junk that someone else made a mess of, like hire a cleaner, you know? So 
it just whatever you like everyone's so different and you really need to fill out that salon so go in there spend some time get to know them ask all the questions you'll be able to figure it out but don't ever feel like a salon's too nice for you because that's just putting yourself down like you will you will raise to the level that everyone there is you will get that good and yeah it might be a little bit scary no matter where you go it's going to be scary you don't want to go somewhere where you know you're going to be like Oh, I got this. This is so easy. Like you need to challenge yourself a little bit. So if you're stepping a little bit out of your comfort zone, that's a good thing. You're going to raise up to that level before you know it and maybe even surpass it. So don't be afraid of that. All right. Here's another question from Nancy. It says, is it okay for pregnant women to get their hair dyed? Do you? Yes. I have asked my doctor if it's okay to keep coloring hair and to get my hair dyed. Both times he was like, yeah, I've never seen any weird three-headed babies or any complications from hair color ever. So that was my doctor. You personally go ask your doctor. Don't take my word for it. Ask your doctor. If they tell you, oh yeah, don't do this, don't do that, then don't. There are certain hair products that you should stay away from when you're pregnant. I don't do Brazilian blowouts actually at all because I heard a lot of negative formaldehyde and like, but especially when I'm pregnant, I wouldn't want to do that on a pregnant woman or do it while I'm pregnant. But there's also, you just kind of have to make sure you're wearing gloves. I mean, be smart about it and you should be fine. I've done hair throughout all of my kids pregnancies and i have not seen any negative effects except for having like a sore back and bottom from just standing all day i mean it's hard on your body but as far as chemicals go and seeing negative effects in my children absolutely nothing so there's no nothing to back that fear so i think there's a lot of fears that people have when they're pregnant um, and a lot of them are some of them have substance to them and yeah maybe you should be afraid of lunch meat but a lot of them, like I still even eat lunch meat. Yeah, sometimes if I'm iffy about it, I'll heat it up in the microwave to piping hot, but like, like I just, I don't have a lot of that fear and I don't let fear really control a lot of what I do. As far as like, if it's a definite no, like I don't take ibuprofen when I'm pregnant. Like I just, in my head, that's just like a definite no. But yeah, hair color, I don't see why not. I absolutely cannot see why that would be a problem. Especially since my doctor was like, oh, you're fine. So that's like, but I, here's the one thing with that is I have heard certain people say, I've never seen this happen to me personally, but I have seen people say that they've noticed that their client's hair reacts differently when they are pregnant, like the client's pregnant and they'll do like the same color they've done all these years and then it acts a little bit different. That's the only thing I've ever heard and it might just be the hormones coming out through the hair or whatever. But I've never personally seen that. All of my clients that have been pregnant while I've done their hair turns out the same. When did I know I was ready to open my own salon? Well, um, I felt like I was ready as soon as I had a full clientele and I knew that they would follow me wherever I went. So like, in, even I was like busier than I wanted to be. And so I was like, even if I moved and like three fourths of them or even a half of them came, I would be fine. So that's kind of how I felt. Um, everyone's so different. You're going to have to just really fill out when you feel ready. Um, how do you make someone platinum without frying their hair? Uh, good question. Sometimes, I mean, frying as in like falling off bad. No, don't go there, but damaging it's going to happen. Platinum hair is damaged hair. That's the bottom line. Unless you have a natural level seven or eight hair, you're going to have a lot of damage which of most people that have platinum hair have a little bit lighter hair, but every once in a while you'll have someone with like dark, thick Asian hair come in and just be like, I want to be platinum. So you have to definitely take some steps to make sure you keep the integrity of the hair to where it doesn't fall out. I found Olaplex to be amazing. I'll show you that. So this is awesome for doing multiple services. Here's the thing. If you have someone with really dark hair and they want platinum, you're gonna to need to bleach their hair two, maybe three times. The first time is gonna get them to like a really bright orange, like clown orange color. And then you're gonna rinse that, even do a conditioner in between some, and you're gonna be using Olaplex, in my opinion, you should. Um, and you're checking the integrity of the hair as you're going. And then the next step would be like, you're bleaching it again, and you're just checking the integrity of the hair. Then it should get it from that orange stage up to like, 
a light orange or like a bright yellow. And then at that point, you're to a point where you can fill it out a little bit more. What kind of a blonde do they want? Do they just want this tone and ashy? You can tone it. Or do they really want it to be like white? You might have to lift it one more time with like a 10 or 20 volume bleach and more of this. And you have to make sure that their hair is in decent condition before you even go there. If they've already done this to their hair, if they've bleached out their hair and then put a black box dye over it and then come back like three months later and been like, I'm ready for that blonde again, you're probably just gonna have to tell them no. So you have to ask them the history of their hair and make sure that their hair can even withstand the torture to get from A to B, but also having the right tools, like definitely using your Olaplex, conditioning in between, being really gentle with it, not combing through the bleach, um, and just watching it carefully and working quick. It just takes a lot of time. And then, like I said, after you bleach two to three times and you get it to that pale, pale yellow, then you're ready to go in with some kind of a violet or like a titanium, whatever toner you decide. I know Wella has a really awesome one. You go in there with that and you tone it until it's platinum and then they have platinum hair. And even that platinum toner can fade out a little bit and the yellow will start to brassiness and show through, but you can always send them home with a purple conditioner. Um, Redken has an awesome one, it's called the Blonde Idol and it's a custom tone, so as they get their hair colored, they can dial it down to just the cream conditioner, and then as they start to show brassiness, they dial it up to all the way to the straight purple. It kind of like does like a half and half and then builds up. So that's awesome platinum tips, but yeah, it takes a lot of time and it should be very expensive. Someone with really dark hair that walks in and wants blonde hair, you just have to be upfront with them and be like, oh yeah, this could be three, four hundred, five hundred dollars. You just need to like make sure they understand that it's not cheap. And then you also need to make sure that they are your BFFs forever. They are going to be coming back in every three to four weeks to get a retouch or it's going to cost them the same amount again because you're going to have to do all of those processes. I mean, it's going to be crazy. If they don't come in religiously to get those roots retouched, they're going to be in sad shape financially and their hair. So good question. <laughs> what if, what do I do when someone wants more blonde in the balayage? I already have them charge to add more or just do it for them. So if you already, Oh, already gave them. She fixed that. If you barely did it and they're like right out the bat, Oh, I, I really wanted it to have a little bit more blonde. And especially if they showed you a picture and it was more blonde, you need to admit sometimes, Oh yeah, we, we like shot for perfection on the very first time, but we were a little bit lower. So you know what? Let's just add a little bit more blonde. And I've had that happen before. And I think that you have to really fill out what's fair. If you didn't have, if they didn't bring in a picture and weren't very specific and you did it and they were like, Oh, I thought it'd be way more than that. Then there was a little bit of lack of communication. Then at that point you could maybe say, you know what? Let's add a little bit more blonde. It, I'm going to have to charge you for just the color. It's 20 bucks or whatever you feel is fair with that person. Maybe you guys had really good communication and then they got it done and then they were just like, Oh, you know what? Now that it's done, I want more blonde. Okay. Yeah. That's going to cost this much more like a full time coloring again. So yeah, you have to kind of fill out what the situation's doing and just try to be fair. People are going to appreciate it if you're being what you feel is fair to them. And if you can explain it logically to them to where they feel like they're being dealt fairly with, then you're going to have a happy customer in the end. And it's okay for you to admit, you know what? And the picture you brought in was a little bit more blonde. Let's go ahead and just add some more blonde. I don't have time today. Can you come back tomorrow or next week? And, and of course I won't charge you if, if it was something like that, where it was kind of like you tried your best and missed a little bit. I think it's more important for you to say, well, let's fix it and have that client be a client for life instead of trying to price gouge them on just that one more color and then they never come again. So you have to kind of feel it out sometimes. And I've done things for people before where I fix things or change it a little bit just because we both kind of feel like, you know, that wasn't quite what I thought it was going to turn out as because you know what coloring can be difficult sometimes. And that's how you learn. You need to be ready to say, well, we, we got there almost. Let's just change this little thing. Let, I know how to fix that. Maybe the tone's a little bit too ashy. Well, let's add a gold toner. 
So you have to be able to kind of be flexible with people a little bit and they will seriously appreciate it so much. Not to the point, you're not letting them walk all over you, but you, you do need to meet in the middle a little bit sometimes, I think. Me personally, that's just my personal view on that. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you liked this Q&A and all of the other ones I've done recently. I know there's a lot. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. And hopefully you guys have already subscribed. If you haven't, do it now. Thumbs up this video. Make sure you like it because it's not easy to talk for three hours. My voice hurts, so give me a like. And don't forget to subscribe to April's Live so you guys can see me every single day. Yes, every day we do a daily vlog, so make sure you go over there. And then don't forget, we are on all of the social media, so please follow us there. All right, you guys, thanks so much. We'll see you later. Bye.